G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for this week's edition of Just The Tips. We haven't got too many of these left. This is round 19 as it currently stands. So what's that? Five rounds after this plus finals? I don't know, it's ticking away. Um, we've got a pretty good round of footy ahead of us this week. So I'm looking forward to that. I am going to have a couple of tips in here that are gonna infuriate some of you and I can't wait for that. Uh, but first of all, let's get into how everything went last week. So I personally got six correct tips out of nine, started well with the Cats over the Pies. It looked icy for a little bit there, but the Cats ended up prevailing. Sydney too good for North by a long way. The Fremantle Hawthorne one annoys me. My gut feel said both of them. You know, do you ever have those games where you want to tip both teams? Um, yeah, anyway, Fremantle fell short in Tassie. Carlton got upset by the Bulldogs. That was a really good win for the Doggies. The Crows beat the Saints. Essendon fell short against Melbourne. I uh, feel annoyed about that one. I feel like they should have won. And I'm annoyed at US and Gold Coast obviously won against Port Adelaide, continuing their crazy home streak. GWS prevailed at the MCG over Richmond, and Brisbane were too good for a very spirited West Coast. So I'll take six, that's not too bad. We will go through how everyone went. I think I moved up four spots, so it kind of indicates that I did about league average. But let's have a look at across the whole league. And we've got a members tipping competition winner for the week is Yeet God Obama. Uh, which is a very interesting username with seven correct tips. And the general tipping winner is Aldrin Shando 27 Hope I'm saying that right. Uh, with nine correct tips and six as the margin. That is really impressive tipping. So well done, Aldrin. The members tipping leader overall is still real swift with 104. And the general tipping leader is someone called Wet Toast Eagles. Druzy once said to me that he thinks he might have made up Wet Toast Eagles as, as a joke, as a concept. I just thought that was hilarious. No. Uh, but well done, Wet Toast Eagles with 109 as your overall score. That's really impressive. And Tully Griffiths pulling away in our fantasy competition with an average of 20.93. Again, I thought I did well this week. I think I got like 22.78. But then I see guys like Tully Griffiths get 2,400 or something ridiculous. So well done to everyone in our tipping and fantasy competitions. Let's get into round 19. Cool, so this round starts off with a doozy between Essendon and Adelaide. I feel like these two teams produce good contests, but then you look at the head-to-head -head and I found something very interesting. Uh, Essendon don't lose to Adelaide, and if I'm not mistaken, they have not less lost to uh, Adelaide since 2017 at Etihad Stadium. Adelaide, of course, making the grand final that year. But yeah, Essendon's won every single game since then, but I just feel like there's been some good games other than this 84 to 21, my God. Uh, but early this year, we had that game where Essendon won by three points and Sam Draper lied, <laughs> laid down on the footy. Uh, that was funny. And I remember last year's being a really good game with Essendon getting a really good win over them at Marvel Stadium. So regardless of that dominance, I still think there's a chance this is a good game and Adelaide's form has improved I think over the last few weeks and most recently had a good win over St. Kilda, kept them to five goals, nine. Um, so they're not completely without their chances and Essendon were a little bit disappointing against Melbourne. Nonetheless, nonetheless, I think Essendon's certainly going to go into this game as favourites. I think there's always a chance of an upset, but without Rankin as well still, I'm pretty comfortable tipping Essendon. I'll say it's by 16 points in a, in a, in a pretty decent game of footy. GWS versus the Gold Coast Suns, the Battle of the Expansion Cup. Uh, GWS getting a good win over a spirited Richmond at the MCG on the weekend, and Gold Coast, again, continuing this crazy cycle of winning every home game and losing every away game. And, yeah, it sounds, like, really logical, but it's still weird how this is playing out. Nine wins, eight losses. And, therefore, who's going to realistically tip them to beat the Giants in Sydney? Now, I don't think... The Giants are completely infallible or anything like that. They've been up and down. Their best footy's been damn good. And sometimes they've been quite poor. So it's not an absolute gimme, this one. But being a home game for the Giants and then being good enough to be 10-7. and seven, I mean, when you look at the evenness of the competition, GWS are right up there with, I mean, what are they, half a win off Essendon in second there? I know that's an uneven amount of games. But you, you get my point. I think the home side should have too much in the bag here for Gold Coast. It would be a really good win for the Suns if they can pull off a win against a finals quality side at the home deck, but I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. They did play in gather round, didn't they? And it was relatively close, but I'll say the Giants by 25 points. St. Kilda versus West Coast. Okay, this is a real clash of the Titans. Uh, 15th versus 16th. I think you can look at the win-loss ratio there and see six wins versus three, and that probably has reflected the difference in quality in these sides. I mean, they did play early this year. It was a pretty close game. I wouldn't say a particularly good game, but it was relatively close and I like to think West Coast have improved since then but St Kilda also have had a reasonable run of form I think I did my power rankings they've won three of their last five going into the last week and then were quite disappointing against the Crows in my opinion five goals nine they kicked so when you bear in mind a couple of factors here Max King is out for the season still 
And I think Windhager's injured too, isn't he? And that was, that was actually a big factor in what happened last time when they were able to shut down Harley Reid and the Saints got on top. Now, West Coast has been, you know, pretty poor for the last couple of months, but coming off a very encouraging performance against Brisbane. I mean, Brisbane are a very good side at the moment. The Eagles got close. Is that a flash in the pan one week after they sacked their coach? Is that here to stay? You're going to hate me. I think St. Kilda are clearly the better team here, but I just have this feeling. I have this feeling West Coast are going to win. And the last time I had a feeling West Coast were going to win, I tipped us to beat Hawthorne. So I'm going to tip West Coast here. Bearing in mind, I know I'm being biased here, but at the end of the day, if I get my own tip wrong, then I'm the biggest loser here. So I'm going to say West Coast surprise St. Kilda and win a game that most people I would expect will tip St. Kilda in. But I'm just going to say the Eagles have a surprising win and then maybe they go back to being shit after that. I'm going to tip the Eagles by five points. Saints fans are going to hate me for that. Hawthorne versus Collingwood. Uh, this one is actually a tricky one to tip. So it's 12th versus 13th. And I do feel like from the eye test, both of these teams are much better than being 12th and 13th. Uh, it's been an interesting season. Hawthorne's most recent win over Fremantle was a good one down in Tassie and a good response after getting battered by Geelong. And I think that does show some maturity beyond their years to be able to stave off any potential form slump. I think to get a win over Fremantle in current form is very good. Now, these two teams have also produced pretty close games in, in recent times. Collingwood, decent enough in their loss to Geelong. It, it was a good game. Nothing really concerning there other than the fact that, you know, they, they can't keep losing 50-50 games like that. And I think this is a big game in the context of the season. You'd imagine only one team can make finals out of these two teams. So this might be one of the biggest clashes of the weekend. And I'm looking forward to it. Now, let's look at the head-to-head. -head. I feel like they've produced pretty close games in recent times. So yeah, in Gather Round, it was five points. Last year, oh, Hawthorne beat them last year. That's right, that's what I'm thinking of. And then the time before that, Collingwood won by four points. And then Hawthorne won that one in 2021. That was when Collingwood were really poor as well. So we know that Hawthorne know how to play Collingwood to some extent. They could absolutely win this game. They could, but I think I'm going to tip Collingwood by four points in a real close game. I don't know why I feel like Collingwood would do this thing where they'll just hang on and win a game and come from behind or something like that. I'm feeling that about Collingwood this week, which might make me look very silly. And Hawthorne fans probably are still dirty about me tipping West Coast against them. I think, I think I'm going to tip Collingwood here, but I could easily see this going either way. This could be game of the round for sure. Geelong versus the Western Bulldogs. Oh, tough one. Both of these teams come off pretty good wins. The Cats have looked really good over the last few and most recently beat Collingwood, which I just talked about. And the Bulldogs just upset Carlton and continuing their own unpredictable kind of season. Now, these two teams at GMHBI, I feel like the Dogs have won there recently. They might have even won more than once. So earlier this year, they did play a gather round. I remember that. Geelong won that narrowly in the uh, winning streak. So at the end of last year, Geelong lost to the Dogs in the final round by 25 points. Bearing in mind, we know that the Cats had some injury issues. Uh, before that, 2023, the Cats beat them at Marvel. Let's look specifically at GMHBA. Okay, so maybe I'm mixing that up a little bit. So they did have a win at GMHBA in the final round of last year. But there was also a game where they lost narrowly. We're getting a little bit further from that, aren't we? That was also the year the Dogs made the grand final. I think this is winnable. I think these are two pretty good teams. And this is another candidate for game of the round. And also probably has a huge impact on the potential finals race. I think the Dogs probably need to win this one. It's getting a little dicey for them in terms of making finals. Oh, tough one. I think there's a really strong argument for either side winning here. I mean, the Dogs can play this ground which is, you know, worth noting. Like I said, I said this in previous videos, some teams can play this ground well and some teams can't. Geelong have been improved, but they're also probably not at that premiership standard they once were, and maybe we don't treat this as a gimme like we're used to, at least for Geelong home games at GMHBA. Oh, this is a tough one. I think I might tip the doggies. I don't really know why. I think it's more gut feel here that they might just beat the Cats, but I feel silly Going against the Cats, you know, I feel like it takes a brave man to tip against the Cats when they're in form. They've been really up and down this year in terms of their best. They've gone through winning streaks, they had losing streaks, and now they're on a bit of a winning streak again. And the Dogs just toppled Carlton, which is really, really compelling. I'm going to say upset Bulldogs to beat the Cats at Gym HBA. Port Adelaide versus Richmond at Adelaide Oval. This one should be straightforward, you would think. The Power were disappointing on the road a little bit to lose to the Gold Coast Suns. Again, no team has gone there and won this year, so maybe we shouldn't be too harsh. And I do think the Power have put in some really good performances lately, generally speaking. Um, you'd think with where Richmond are at at the moment, you know, they haven't been playing too 
poorly at the moment, but they are anchored to the bottom of the ladder, and this is a tough trip. What does work for Richmond is that they play Adelaide Oval pretty well. I mean, they beat Adelaide there this year. They also beat Adelaide there last year, and the Crows were a decent side last year. This would be a monumental upset, though, if Richmond beat Power, and it would probably go a long way to deciding whether the Power make finals or not. Um, that being said, I just think there's too much firepower, particularly in the midfield here for the Power. I mean, they've been a little bit inconsistent well that's that's for sure they've been really inconsistent this year in their best and their worst again there's a huge gap and you just look at the ladder and you can tell you can say that about so many teams this year i'm gonna not think about this too much i, I think the power should win this by i don't know six goals i think that's probably fair to suggest and if richmond win it will be a massive upset the brisbane lions versus sydney now this bizarrely if you look at the live ladder right now it's first versus seventh in the current ladder, I think, are the Lions fourth? Something like that. They're either fourth or they're fifth. Um, but it could still genuinely be a grand final preview. Because of the form that Brisbane have been in, um, and they've been challenged by some sides, and generally looked really good, and they've got this season humming after a really poor start to the season, I didn't expect the Lions to be where they're at currently. They're also in a really good position to make the top four, which I think is going to be key in them potentially playing in a grand final. Now, Sydney... They dropped three games this year now. Of course, they had that early season loss to Richmond. They lost two recently to St. Kilda and, of course, Fremantle. I think this is a tough game. I know that Sydney did topple them at the Gabba a couple of years ago. 2021 it was. And, um, again, like GMHBA, some teams play well at the Gabba and some don't. And maybe maybe it's just West Coast that are horrific there. I could be wrong. But we know that Brisbane are generally strong at home despite their really poor start to the season. So this is an absolute heavyweight battle. And uh, again, this is like the third time I've said this is a potential game of the round. So I've got Hawthorne Collingwood, Geelong and the Bulldogs, really interesting with really important implications on finals. But I kind of forgot this game was coming and this should probably be a game of the round and going to be very informative as to how legitimate the Brisbane Lions are. I'm going to back them in, I think. I think the Lions of the Gabba in their current form, I know that Sydney just torched North Melbourne, no doubt. And they probably do have Brisbane covered in terms of on-field quality if I had to analyze it that way. But... Current form lines, this is a tough trip up to the Gabba. I'm going to tip the Lions in a home game. I could easily see the Swans winning, but I'm going to give it to the Brisbane Lions, which will shoot them up into second place on the ladder. Could you believe that? Considering how you know poor their start to the season was, Collingwood beat them at the Gabba in round four or round three. To look at the ladder now and see Collingwood 11th and Brisbane in second, that's interesting stuff. Okay, Fremantle versus Melbourne at Optus Stadium. Uh, this one could be quite an interesting game. I think Fremantle have proven they're pretty good against the Ds. We saw what happened last time they met earlier this year, and uh, that was in Alice Springs, if I'm not mistaken, and Fremantle embarrassed them. That being said, uh, a lot has changed since then. Melbourne had a really good win over the Bombers on the weekend, and I think generally speaking, since their loss to the Lions at the Gabba, they've looked a lot stronger. Even when they played West Coast, I could tell you know Melbourne had sort of returned to much more compelling form, uh, despite the loss of Christian Petrarca, which is interesting. Fremantle had a blip on the radar. You know, I think they were pretty confident, at least their fans, of beating Hawthorne in Tassie. At least that was the way I read the situation, and uh, Hawthorne just pipped them. I think Fremantle was leading throughout that game at one point. A disappointing loss, but nonetheless, it's um, it's a tough fixture, going to Tassie and playing a Hawthorne side that is undoubtedly good, despite what the latter says. At home here, I really don't have too much doubt in Fremantle. I mean, there's a chance they have an off night in Melbourne win, and looking at the, the latter position, where wow, there's only two points separating them. And actually, if Melbourne win this game, they go ahead of Fremantle. So that's interesting. But I think Fremantle has matured this year. And I'm going to say that they should be too good by 27 points. Carlton versus North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium. Carlton got a bit of a uh, wake-up call in a loss to the Bulldogs, which is a team that has a lot of star power and quality. And um, we didn't probably expect Carlton to drop that game because they've been in some really good form this year. Nonetheless, it happened and it was they were probably due for a loss. And now they've got a North Melbourne footy team who, again, have probably had a decent run of form there, a decent stretch. Then they had the Swans at the SCG, and they got a real uh, reality check, I suppose, which is normal, which is normal, and not a massive concern here. I can't really envisage a scenario here where North Melbourne topple Carlton. Again, this could be a massive upset, you know, if Larky gets on at the end of a few. Could it be a good time to play Carlton? Perhaps, perhaps. If there is a drop-off in form, it doesn't usually just go for one week. Uh, that being said, I think you'd be a really brave man to tip north in an upset here. So I'll say Carlton win by a good 40 points. All right, that is my tips for this round as we look at the ladder. Uh, we've got Sydney, Carlton, and Brisbane entrenched as the top three teams in the competition. I think that's probably about right, despite the fact that Carlton lost 
on the weekend. And um, then we got Fremantle still in the top four if they beat Melbourne. So that's a big game. So had Melbourne won that, I think it would have knocked Fremantle out of the top eight. But because Fremantle won, they go to fourth. Essendon still in fifth there, uh, paying the price a little bit for percentage, which is interesting. When you've got a draw, you don't think percentage is relevant. And then you look at the third, fourth, and fifth, they've all had one draw. Cats holding on to seventh. Again, I probably have that wrong because I've tipped the Bulldogs and I've tipped them very bravely. And I I could be talked out of that one very easily. Um, but you'd imagine that if Geelong win, that they go back into the top three. Other than that, the ladder looks pretty familiar there. You've still got these teams, the Bulldogs, Melbourne, Collingwood, and potentially Gold Coast. I really do think that the finals... Oh, that's tough. I don't feel like I can rule out Hawthorne, but it's getting harder and harder. That There are essentially two wins out of the top eight now. It becomes a must-win game, this Collingwood and Hawthorne game. You'd imagine maybe only one of these teams can play finals. I feel like Hawthorne on their day are finals quality. But so are the Gold Coast Suns, so are Collingwood. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird, interesting season, guys. But let me know in the comments what you are expecting this round. Obviously, there's a few tough ones there, and it will separate the men from the boys and the women from the ladies in this tipping competition. Some real tough ones. I've gone rogue with a couple. I tip the Eagles. I tip the Bulldogs. Tip Collingwood over Hawthorne. You could easily argue they don't deserve to be favorites in that game. But anyway, let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.